So this little screencast is about specific learning disorders. And what we're going to do is go through the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria. And I'm just going to explain some things to you so you have a better understanding of learning disorders. Learning disorders are something that uh, people frequently misunderstand. Um, oftentimes I work with teachers that uh, really don't have an accurate understanding of learning disorders. So it's important that you read this material and kind of grasp these concepts. Um, and the way that we conceptualize learning disorders has changed um, in the DSM-5. And one thing that is a major area that we uh, recognize is something that has gained a lot of popularity in the past, oh, I'd say, I don't know, five to 10 years and that's response to intervention. And so now uh, most school districts, um, before implementing academic accommodations um, in like an individualized education plan, what they want to do is see if they can remediate the problems that the student is having. And that is what response to intervention is. So what happens if we give intensive remedial instruction in that specific area for at least six months um, does the student have improvement in those skills to the area that uh, or to the level that they should um, so when we look at the different learning disorders what we're going to uh, look at first is um, inaccurate or slow and effortful word reading um, so uh, the child would read a single word out loud incorrectly or slowly and they might hesitate guessing words um, or they have difficulty sounding words out. The next one is difficulty understanding the meaning of what is read so that's like comprehension and they may read text accurately but then not understand what's going on the sequence of events relationships inferences or deeper meaning of what is read so uh, you can see one is kind of the mechanics of reading do they have difficulty reading do they read very very slowly or do they have trouble with comprehension the individual might have both um, but they might have just impairment in one area so um, we can diagnose a specific learning disorder and then we would specify with impairment in reading. This used to be called a reading disorder. That's what it was referred to as. And then you can uh, note whether they have problems with accuracy, rate, fluency, or comprehension. Now just as a note, and this is from the DSM, about dyslexia. And dyslexia was a term um, that really meant trouble with lexicon or the sounds of language so having trouble putting the sounds of language uh, to um, the letters that make up language and a lot of people use dyslexia just to mean reading disorder um, I would encourage you to not use the term dyslexia um, a lot of times people use the term dyslexic like someone is dyslexic and I, you know I think that defines who that person is and it's negative so if you say someone has a reading disorder um, I think there's a lot less negative stigma to that but we people still use dyslexia if you work within the school systems they will use the term dyslexia to mean reading disorder but what dyslexia is really technically referring to is a pattern of difficulty characterized by problems with accurate or fluent word reading, poor decoding, and poor spelling abilities. So it, they're having trouble with lexicon. If dyslexia is used to specify this pattern of difficulties, it's also really important to specify any other difficulties that are present. So um, I want you to keep that in mind. Now if we go back, next one is difficulty with spelling. 
like adding, emitting, or substituting vowels or consonants. A lot of my students have trouble with spelling. Uh, just because you have difficulty with spelling doesn't mean you have a learning disorder. Don't worry, because I have difficulty with spelling too. Um, I'll, at the end of this, explain um, how we qualify poor spelling as being a learning disability or not. And then the next one is difficulty with written expression, like making multiple grammatical or punctuation errors with sentences, uh, poor paragraph organization, or their writing uh, doesn't have uh, clarity. So um, think about, let's just kind of pause here for a second. Think about this. Uh, maybe a student didn't have uh, good teachers. They didn't have experience with writing. They haven't written a lot. Actually, I get a lot of freshman college students that have uh, significant difficulty with written expression. But as we work with them and they work on their writing and intervene, they respond. So that would be like that response to intervention. Somebody really with a, a, a learning disorder, even if you have intensive remediation, they're likely going to continue to have problems in that area. So that's called uh, specific learning disorder with impairment in written expression. This used to be called a, just a writing disorder and then you can specify where the particular problem is. And then the last one is difficulty mastering number sense, number facts, or calculation like having trouble understanding numbers or magnitude of relationships. Uh, they use their fingers to add up single digit numbers instead of just knowing uh, the math fact, uh, as other kids their age would. They get lost in the midst of uh, uh, doing math, mental arithmetic, um, or they might switch procedures around, like doing addition instead of subtraction or something like that. There's also difficulty with math reasoning, um, so difficulty applying math concepts, facts, or procedures to solve quantitative problems. So that's called a specific learning disorder with impairment in mathematics. And we would specify whether that is number sense, memorization of arithmetic facts, or accurate or fluent calculation or reasoning. So uh, this used to be called mathematics disorder. Um, in the school systems, sometimes just like dys dyslexia, you will hear the term dyscalculia and this is another term just like dyslexia but this is specifically characterized by difficulty processing numerical information learning arithmetic facts and performing accurate or fluent calculations so if you do use the term dyscalculia you should indicate if there's any additional problems um, so I would recommend that you stick with specific learning disorder and then specify whether it's in reading writing or math and don't I would not use the term uh, dyslexia or dyscalculia but uh, you will encounter that so uh, just so you're aware of it now who's got a learning disorder this is kind of the tricky part because in order to have a learning disorder you have to be smart okay and this is one thing that I think confuses people. So we're gonna look at um, a bell curve here with IQ scores. And what we're looking for um, when we diagnose a learning disorder is discrepancy in overall ability or IQ and a specific area of ability or achievement. So what we would do with children is typically you'd give them an IQ test. So the uh, Wexler uh, test, the WISC, the WISC um, four is is uh, currently um, on its way out or outdated, and has been replaced by the updated WISC. Five. If you don't know what the whisk is, you should probably Google that and look that up. So 
The whisk is a measure of a child's intellectual ability, and we use it for children's uh, age uh, 6 to 16. Um, it takes about an hour to administer, and I just got my whisk 5 uh, testing equipment in the mail the other day. So um, it's um, what you do is you get an overall IQ score. So let's say a child has an IQ score of 100. 100 is average. Okay? So your IQ score is comparing your intellectual ability to your peer group. So we're comparing you to your same age peers. Average 100 would be like the 50th percentile. So if you walk into a room of your same age peers, you're going to be smarter than half of them. Now listen, the IQ test has a lot of problems. That's not what this lecture is about. Um, but it's the best tool that we have for this. Now, if your IQ score is 100, we would expect another little mini bell curve right here. And that would uh, be where we would expect to find your academic abilities or achievement. And so the test we use for academic and uh, ability and achievement, two uh, typical academic uh, achievement tests are the uh, Wyatt, which is the Wexler individual achievement test. Another one that you'll frequently see is the WCJ and that's a Woodcock Johnson. So these tests give us um, information as to the child's achievement in that particular area. So again we would kind of expect that to fall within one standard deviation of what their IQ score is. So let's again say their IQ score is 100. You would want to see that range between 85 and 115. That's one standard deviation. A standard deviation on the IQ test is 15 points. Okay. So it depends on what school district you're in. So different districts have different requirements. Sometimes it's one and a half standard deviations, which would be a 22 point split or two standard deviations, which would be a 30 point split. So these um, splits between academic achievement and ability are pretty drastic. So let's say we have a child and their IQ score is 100, maybe their math ability is up here at a one, I don't know, 107 or something like that. Um, and their reading is pretty good, it's up here. But when they try and write, they just can't write. And their writing score is down here at a 70. Well, that would be indicative of a learning disorder. So it's that discrepancy. And if you are very smart, let's say your full scale IQ score is a 130, but your reading rate is at 100, well, that's still a learning disorder. Even though your reading rate is normal, it might cause you impairment if all your other skills are in this area here. So we want to see that split of one and a half to two standard deviations when we do testing. And that's how we um, see if somebody has a learning disorder. So let's do another example down here. If your IQ score is a 70, you need a 22 point split. So your skills would have to be way down here. And it's really difficult for somebody whose IQ score is already low to have that 22 point split. I mean, they would have some problems that are different, but not a learning disorder. So again, that's why I always say, listen, in order for you to have a specific learning disorder, you got to be smart. Um, because what we want to see is that split between full scale IQ score and one of the areas of academic ability or achievement. And, and it could be all three. So you can have 
uh, specific learning disorder in reading, writing, and math. And sometimes that happens. So that's it for that. I just wanted to clarify things a little bit and go over the DSM diagnostic criteria, and I hope that straightens things out for you.